Hi there. Now, in part three of this question, we've got to calculate the greatest height of Q above the ground. So, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video, have a go, and when you're done, you can come back and check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, to do this, as P goes from here and goes downwards 0.2 metres, obviously Q is going to rise 0.2 metres. So let's just put that at that point there. So this distance that Q would be at this stage would be 0.2 metres plus another 0.2 metres then, a height of 0.4 metres. But at this point here, Q has got a speed, an upward speed, the same as the speed of P, just before it hits the ground. Now remember that P hit the ground with a speed of 1.4 metres per second. So Q is going to be moving upwards at this moment in time with a speed of 1.4 metres per second. Now at this point, when P hits the ground, the string goes completely slack. So there's going to be no tension acting on the particle Q. So if I just draw it again just down here, we've got Q here. It's now moving up, started off moving up with a speed of 1.4 meters per second, but it's gradually slowing down. And it's slowing down because the only acceleration it's receiving is that due to gravity. It acts downwards, so it's now going to decelerate, and that acceleration is g, g equaling 9.8 meters per second per second. So it's going to rise a height, a height above this 0.4 meters. We'll call that height, say, h, OK? So we just mark that in there. That's going to be h. And it's h that we need to find at this stage. So all we've got to use now is one of the constant acceleration equations, the SUVAT ones, s for displacement, u for velocity, v for final velocity, a for acceleration, and t for time. Now, S, the displacement, well, we're going upwards, so I'm going to take upwards as positive. So that displacement is going to be H. U, the initial velocity, was 1.4. V was 0. It came to instantaneous rest at this point. And the acceleration, well, that acts downwards, so that's in the opposite sense to our positive sense, that's going to be minus 9.8. As for time t, well, we're not interested in that. So we just need an equation connecting our variables s, u, v, and a. And that equation is going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So if we put our values in, v is 0, so 0 squared is 0 equals u squared, that's going to be 1.4 squared. And then we've got plus 2 times the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, times s, the displacement, which is h. Now here we have a negative term. So if I add that term to both sides, we've got, therefore, 2 times 9.8 h equals 1.4 squared. And all I've got to do now to get h is just simply divide both sides by 2 times 9.8. So therefore, h is going to equal 1.4 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. And if you do that calculation, it comes out to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 meters then. So therefore, q rises a further 0 0.1 meters above this point here where the string becomes slack. So therefore, we've got the total distance above the ground. I'll just abbreviate this, distance above ground. Well, that's going to equal 0.4 meters then, 
plus the 0.1 meter and that's going to be equal to 0.5 meters. Okay, 